Hello, and welcome back to the Prentice Hall Biology Book, Chapter 4, Ecosystems and Communities. Uh, starting off with Section 4-1, The Role of the Climate. So, climate is different from weather. Weather is the day-to-day -day condition of Earth's atmosphere at a particular time and place, while climate refers to the average year-after-year -year conditions of temperature and precipitation in a particular region. One of the biggest aspects of the climate is the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is when uh, greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, water vapor, and other atmospheric gases trap heat in the atmosphere. And this overall heats up the earth. Now contrary to popular belief, green, the greenhouse effect is beneficial. It's helped keep the earth at a warmer temperature or making sure that the different climates aren't too cold. The effect of the latitude on climate. Because of ill Earth's t tilted axis, sunlight does not strike Earth the s uh, does not strike Earth the same in the different places. There are three main zones: the polar zone, which is colder, getting the lowest angle of sun. Then there's the temperate zone, which is the ranging temperature from hot to cold, and it's between the polar and tropical zone. The tropical zone is the hottest. It's near the equator and receives direct sunlight nearly year-round. So heat transport in the biosphere. Because of the unequal heating, uh, both the air and water heat differently, which results in air and wind and ocean currents. As you can see from the two diagrams, the air uh, at the top, up north is colder, so it'll sink down and is then heated by the equator and goes up, creating global winds. And it's similar to the ocean too. In the ocean, the cold water sinks to the bottom of the ocean and then travels along the ocean floor till it reaches warmer climate, warmer climates, and then it'll heat up and rise up to the surface. Okay, section 4-2, what shapes an ecosystem? So the main aspects that shape an ecosystem are biotic and abiotic factors. So these uh, abiotic factors, or these biotic factors, are um, the living, the entire living uh, organisms in the uh, ecosystem. So for instance, the trees, the animals, the uh, just all of the living factors. The abiotic are the non-living factors, are the physical factors. So this would include the geography, if it was a mountain uh, ecosystem or a desert ecosystem. Together, the two determine the survival and growth of, the, of an organism and the productivity of the ecosystem in which the organism lives. So, here are a list of the uh, abiotic and biotic factors. Okay, the niche. The niche includes is the, um, the full range of physical and biological conditions in which an organism lives and the way in which the organism uses those conditions. So this includes its place in the food web, the physical conditions of the uh, ecosystem that requ are required for the organism to survive, the type of food it consumes, and where it can get the food, and then when and how it reproduces in the ecosystem. So. Next, community interactions. There are three main types of interactions between organisms in an ecosystem. There's competition, predation, symbiosis. So, for um, competition, so it's when competition is when organisms um, are going after the same ecological resource at the same time and the same place. And a resource is just defined as any necessity of life, whether it be water, nutrients, uh, territory, anything like that. So under competition, there's the competitive exclusion principle, which states that no two species can occupy the same niche in the same habitat at the same time. Uh, when this happens, it results in direct competition. And with direct competition, there's a winner and a loser, and it usually ends with the loser dying out. Next is predation. Predation is when one organi organism captures and feeds on another organism. 
and this is the predator feeding on the prey. And then there's symbiosis. This is when two organisms live closely together, and there are three main types. Mutualism, when both species benefit from their, uh, their living together. So an example of this would be ants and aphids. Ants carry aphids around to the different um, plants, and through this, the aphids produce a sweet liquid that the ants can use to, that the ants harvest and use as food. And then there's common common cellism, um, which is when one member benefits while the other is unaffected. An example of this would be whales and barnacles. Barnacles latch on, they use the whale as protection, as travel, but they provide no benefit for the whale. The whale hardly even notices they're there. Then there's uh, parasitism. This is when one organism lives on or inside another and harms it. So it parasite the parasite, the um, it one living on the other, the organism living on the other organism gets its nutrients, its food, basically its life, it's the it's all of it that it needs to survive from the host. And this usually weakens, but will not usually kill the host. So an example of this would be a tick living on a dog or another such mammal. Next is ecological succession. So ecological succession is defined as a series of predictable or unpredictable changes in an ecosystem. And there are really, um, because ecosystems are constantly changing in response to natural and human disturbances, um, the ecosystem, the older inhabitants of the ecosystem gradually die out because they're, they're unable to adapt to the changes. This causes new organisms to move in, which then again causes further changes. So, and then this whole process is what is known as ecological succession. There are two main types, primary succession and secondary succession. With primary succession, pri it starts when, let's say, a volcano erupts in the middle of the ocean and it forms a small rock-covered island. There's no life, no trees. So primary succession would be the introduction of um, mosses or soil brought in from a storm, and that will then start to ooh, become an ecosystem with growing trees, growing plants, and even maybe the introduction of animals. So then the introduction, the first species to um, inhabit a site where prim uh, primary succession has occurred are called the pioneer species. Next is the secondary uh, succession. And this is when if a there is already a healthy and um, ecosystem and a drastic change occurs, let's say you're in a forest and there's a forest fire, the ecosystem's um, uh, their reaction and the changes that occur to that forest after the wildfire are what, in, are what is known as secondary succession. So it's changes that have occurred to an environment that was already uh, home or uh, hab, hab, home to other species. Okay, 4-3, biomes. So biomes are co a 